Only children believe in monsters. Well, those raised by one. The story is about a woman named Mary Villiers and her four children, most predominantly her son George, who she grooms to infiltrate the court of King James I. Mary's character was outrageous in the sense that here was this person who had absolutely no agency of her own, no autonomy, didn't own any property, had such a strong sense of self and a, and a directness and a kind of an ambition for herself and particularly for her children. Sir Thomas Compton. Afraid so. You? Your next wife. And when you think about what she managed to achieve, actually with very, very little help, she really left everyone sat up very, very well. If I were a man and I looked like you, I'd rule the fucking planet. George is the second son of Mary. When we first meet him, he's very unrefined. His mother sees a lot of potential in him and uses him essentially as a tool to accrue power for the family. She sees an opportunity to put her son into King James's court. He very much uh, relied on George as well, as a partner, as a friend, as a lover, but also as a political ally. As the series goes on, George starts to enjoy the, the power that he's accrued, the, the wealth, being able to attract whoever he wants to attract, and, and essentially it corrupts him. Those who defy me regret it. The journey that James has and the story is a, quite a moving one and also a destructive and, and, and gritty and, and intense. Fuck! Nick is so lovely and such a, such a great talent. He's really playing someone who's quite young, quite unformed and with very little ambition. And through the course of the series, you watch him grow up and develop an intricate sense of self and power. It's been an amazing experience working with Julianne Moore and it's very surreal being able to work with a, a face that you so recognize your entire life and I so admire her work. Getting the relationship right, the chemistry right between this mother and son was very important. I think her ability to collaborate made that relationship very interesting on screen. Well, this is very silly. With Tony as well, he has this, this wild Scottish sense of humour that makes being on set a lot of fun. Hi, Nye, Brian, Kai. Is that the way it goes? Tony is amazing as King James. What a tremendously difficult part. It really asked a lot of him in terms of the physicality and, and the demands put on him. I feel wearing these costumes, these sumptuous outfits and, and shooting and these incredible locations that we've been lucky enough to film in, it can only make you feel more into your character. It's been a real good experience. The historical accuracy is incredible. Do not be distracted by dreams of war. This series has a lot more edge than perhaps a lot of the periodic dramas that already exist. There's a lot of passion, there's a lot of sensuality, sexuality. I think everybody loves historical fiction. You know, it's, it's interesting because there's an element of fantasy to it, of wondering what it would be like if you lived during that time. Like, what would your relationship be like? How would you dress? How would you behave? And it keeps a foot, obviously, in, in what happens historically, but it also allows you to experience history in a kind of a more, more vivid, more alive sort of way. With our soundtrack, the way that the show is shot, the vision of our executive director, Oliver Hermanus, the tone of the show, modernity of the language, definitely lends itself to being a different period piece. I think the production values are really, really high. It's absolutely beautiful and, and opulent and a wildly entertaining romp through history.